All right, got a light. <laughs> Hello, Nate and Beth coming your way to continue our reviews of Friday 13th, the series, in this case, uh, season one, episode 24, by the name of... Pipe Dreams. And I win. I, well, pipe, kind of. Pipe Dreams. Pipe Dreams. So I guessed it was a plumber, and Beth guessed it was... I guessed an opium pipe or a smoking pipe. So I won. No, because it was a smoking pipe. Okay. It was this... like this really cool pipe that had, like, the devil's face on it for, like, where you put the tobacco in. Kind of was the it bowl. A wo like a wooden pipe? I wooden wasn't sure devil. if it was wooden or if it was clay, but it wooden, was... Wooden devil head it pipe. pretty sweet. So who's going to begin this review? Um, I'll let you. So this episode begins at a uh, inventor's, what is it? Inventor's... Convention. Convention, where this one guy who we don't know who it is yet is kind of just looks like he's looking around for someone or other. It's the end of the inventor's convention, and this guy... <coughs> comes up to this other guy and just lo hands him a load of shit. Looks like you've got a really great invention. I'm sure you were too shy to unveil. And he's like, as a matter of fact, I do. It's this super duper, you know. Self-contained laser home, gun. Homing beacon gun laser. Who the hell knows what it is. 100% accuracy a, with a half a mile. It's a destroying, killing gun plan. So then... Yeah. To me and Beth's dismay, this guy's like, oh, okay, well, we'll be partners. And then he takes this pipe, scary-looking pipe, out of his pocket and starts to light it. And we quickly realize, oh, my God, this smoke is coming. Is engulfing the young inventor. It's like orange satanic smoke. It's obviously some kind of visual effect, which, just like so many of the effects in the series so far, has done pretty well. The pretty well. The smoke envelops the, the inventor, and Beth would probably like to describe what happens next. It's like he was being burned alive by the smoke. It was just screaming and... Agony. As, agony. And as the smoke disappeared, so did he. <laughs> so this smoke, Satan smoke, burns this guy to shit and vanishes him. Um, vanishes him, um, um, and... Uh, <laughs> The, the guy who lit the pipe with the pipe takes the plans and goes and submits them to this, I don't know, com company that can Patent. can do a prototype and try to get this, take this gun to market so we can kill a bunch of people overseas like always. And uh, that's then the one he, thing I didn't like about it. He goes home to... Uh, his girlfriend, woman, I mean, this guy's like, he says, that they say he's 55, he looks 65, and but whatever. Well, stress can do a lot to a person. Yeah, this, this character is stressed out and goes home to this uh, girlfriend, and it kind of just kind of reminded me of the character from Airplane, the guy who's down in his luck, and, you know, he's got a, he takes out that insurance policy and plans to blow the or did I say airplane? Airport. You did. Airport. <laughs> airport. The, the guy who <laughs> takes out the insurance policy and plans to blow the plane to shit so his wife can get the money. But same kind of setup, and this guy comes home after the meeting with the gun manufacturer. I'm doing all the talking here. Yeah, well, the guy comes home with a bunch of roses and pretty much asks the his girlfriend to say, Ask me if I like what you're wearing. <laughs> Okay, so she eventually asks him. He's like, I hate it. In fact, I hate everything about this place. You deserve so much better. So in the next scene, they're like moving into this big house after, you know, he shows the gun to, um... It's like a mob boss. Yeah. He but... didn't really seem like a businessman. He seemed like a mafia mob boss. Mm -hmm. He's like, we don't have a board meeting. If I like it, it goes. If it doesn't, it goes. If it, no, if it, if I like it, it goes. If it, I don't, it doesn't. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so basically, long story not as long. The uh, this you know the guy stole these plans, and it looks like it's going well for this guy. They get a, probably a bunch of money up front, so he's mm -hmm. able to move out of the dive that they were in with the, his wife and girlfriend. girlfriend at the time, and move to a fancy schmancy house. Cut to. Uh, 
Ryan and at the oh, yeah. Curious Goods, and Beth's eager to tell you what happens. <laughs> well, I guess he gets an invitation to a wedding, and he's like, oh, I don't want to go, my dad, dad, dad. An invitation from his dad. Well, an invitation to his dad's wedding. I don't know if it, I don't, it's not from his dad. We find out that his Well, at the time, we thought it was from his dad. At the time, we thought it was from his dad. So him and Mickey go to the house that was listed on it. He's like, no way does my dad live here. We've always lived in dingy apartments, and this is this can't be the right place. And, yeah, his dad lives there, and the girlfriend's like, oh, I'm the one that invited him. Well, you got to say that when his dad opens the door, he's like, what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? What do you want? <laughs> and it turns out the, the girlfriend invited him, mm -hmm. girlfriend of dad. She just wanted to, them to bury the hatchet. <laughs> I know. To me, that's not a. That's it, it's not a positive thing. phrase, even though it's supposed to be. It's... Bury the hatchet in the back of your head. <laughs> so, but I, I can't remember. Since this episode didn't do a whole hell of a lot for me, it's hard for me to remember. But at some point. At some point, Dad gets blackmailed by someone else at the company who discovers that the original inventor um, had a brother that's been looking for the Up in Smokes inventor, and uh, he's the second one to get the pipe bomb. <laughs> he, he wants he to... He gets smoked. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I don't know if I can think anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, he was going to basically, to save the, this guy the embarrassment of telling everyone, he was just going to say, sign, sign this, we'll save you the embarrassment and, you know, get the hell out of here. I guess was that guy who tried blackmailing him going to take the credit then? Or? Yeah. Okay. I get all the money, I get all the credit. <laughs> because he found out that the, you know, that that the someone else invented this before this guy showed up to the company with the plan. So yeah. obviously, I think Best said, well, it most likely, yeah, this the pipe's going to come out. Sure enough, pipe comes out in the hallway, which the set of this like place that builds the gun is like a high school. I mean, it's, it's just got a bunch lockers, of little skinny lockers. All up and down the hallways. It's funny, but obviously, the, you know, pipes lit, smoke chases this guy to the and end of the hall. The hallway into a corridor, and Mickey is there. For, I don't even know why Mickey's even there. She happens to exactly no see reason why the she... smoke envelop this guy, and she runs into Ryan. Oh, this guy's on fire. There's smoke, and he's screaming. And then by the time they come back, to the the corridor is empty. Like the boxes are even kind of put back to the original spot. So really bad continuity in that one. But you know, and the father comes up. Ryan's father comes up and says, "What's going on? What are you doing here?" What'd you see? What'd you see? What'd you see? I didn't see nothing. I was just confused. Right. And, you know, she's just lying to save her skin or whatever. But, honestly, for me, this episode is, it's kind of like a, instead of, it kind of it's a small departure from just, you know, the horror element. Like, it's half horror, cursed item stuff, and half kind of family drama. Oh, did we even, yeah, I think we mentioned it, that this guy turns out to be Ryan's dad. I think we did. If not, we did now. <clears throat> this guy, well, whatever. This guy turns out to be Ryan's dad, and Ryan's like, my dad would never use a cursed object, but yeah, this. But honestly, too much I think drama. is like the first time he used the pipe because he didn't know what it did. He was just as surprised at the first kill as we were. So I don't think he realized what the pipe did. He probably just used it as a good luck charm, and something told mm. like he was compelled. To put tobacco in it because I don't think he's a smoker so it, it's can you kind of get the vibe that the pipe was like telling him how it how to use it and that maybe not how it worked but how to use it so anyway Jack Marshak comes into the picture and shows up after it seems like he's been absent for two or three episodes so it was good to see him back halfway through he comes up as well and I think that, you know, Ryan's dad said the same thing. Who's this now? <laughs> it's just like yeah. he gets nervous more as more people show up because, I don't know, he doesn't want to be 
found out or whatever. And I think, I don't know if Mar Marshak pretty much came up because Mickey called so they could figure yeah, this Mickey out. Mickey snuck a phone call in to see if a stolen wanna pipe or... See what's going on with this cursed item pipe thing and and saves the day or whatever. And maybe uh, this one kind of just was a mind wipe for me. Would you like to take it home? And what's the last kind of... Well, there were three total kills. Deaths, um, yeah. And two, course, two. So the first kill was the young inventor. The second kill was blackmailer. The blackmailer. And then, well, the Marshak almost got killed by the demonstration. There was a, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then the fourth kill. Third. The third, well, yeah, the third kill. Sorry, I was thinking Jack got, got knocked off. But <laughs> it was an attempted kill. Um <laughs> But the father went into the... They're looking for the pipe everywhere. And that the pipe was actually in um, his office at the plant, which is what they call it. So Mickey and Marshak see him getting the pipe out of the drawer that he locked. And Mickey runs off with the pipe and there's a struggle and he gets the pipe back and he lights it up. And so the smoke is going after Mickey she seals herself in this little room and finds electrical tape and she's trying to seal off the room with the tape so that the smoke can't get in and the smoke is getting in any way and then Ryan comes from goodness knows where and the smoke with is the, with the with the prototype gun the prototype gun and he's like where's Mickey to his father I don't you know you better not you know mess with me anymore I can swear can't I don't fuck with me I want to know where she is and he's like, it's too late, it's too late, She's, it's normally done by now, it has to take a life. So Ryan runs to where the guy was, where his dad was pointing. And Ryan gets enveloped by the smoke, dad comes around the corner and pushes Ryan out of the smoke and pretty much self-sacrifices for the self -sacrifices final kill. Self-sacrifices to save Ryan's life and yeah... Not a big fan of this one just because it was mostly family drama and this guy I didn't I wanted to I didn't tell you during the episode because I wanted to get your real reaction which is going to happen right now the guy who plays his dad is the father of the kid with Tourette's and seldom silent never oh, yeah. heard the yeah, Quincy episode him. which is a famous one to me I first saw that at the age of 14 and on TV the first I don't know half of it or something, and it been. I, I recorded myself watching it like off TV, and it always been this, this famous thing that I finally got to see the whole thing of last year, like thirty years later. Seldom silent, never heard because I bought all the Quincy M E, DVDs seasons. But and, and we are talking about Friday the Thirteenth, the TV series. So in that episode, <laughs> seldom silent, never heard. Just kidding, but. <laughs> Yeah, this is just depressing to me, and the guy who plays his dad was just, you know, sleazy character, and after after dad dies, Beth said, like, no, they all lost someone, and because I guess Mickey, I mean, all, all the main characters kind of lost someone in the series at this so point. So far, Jack lost his fiance. Mickey lost, well, she was fond of someone, and he, like, self-sacrificed, I can't remember which episode. And then now... Uh, I think it was the last one. Might have been. I don't remember. One of the last one ones. The last might ones. have been the last one. Who the hell knows? Now, <laughs> now Ryan lost his dad. That's kind of sad. It cause... is kind of sad. Because he lost his brother, too, when he was younger. Yeah. It's so. just like, does he have a mom that'll show up in season two? We'll see. I'm we'll find out. But... I guess for me that does it. What's your my my thumbage is gonna be the old just kind of sticking almost all the way down like you know between seven and eight. It's uh, I was thinking a half thumb, but you know what? Talking about it, it's just depressing. So it'll be a one quarter of a thumb for me. I'm interested to hear best thumb. I was drawn to a half thumb, but I might have to agree with you. Aww. It just was a sad it was a episode. Downer and having mm -hmm. dad sacrifice. Because they were supposed to, you know, dad was supposed to get married after the demonstration, and it was supposed to be this yeah. happy day. And, and they, he, he like died the day before the wedding. And day of the wedding. Day of the wedding. There you go. And and yeah. And, ugh. 
showed the final scene of his fiance dumb. calling around, have you seen him? Have you seen him? And she's like, 23 people haven't seen him. And it's just like, was he looking, heart wrenching. Wasn't she looking for her husband, her soon, her fiance? Oh, I thought she was talking about. No, she was talking about talking about, about Ryan. No, Ryan was in the house with her. Anyway, so, it's just a downer. Now we're all depressed. So now I have to watch another one to get over it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll help. But uh, see, we've gone past our thirteen That's minute okay. mark. That's okay. It happens. So what's the NECA episode? The NECA episode? Next episode. NECA's cool. Oh, too expensive, though. Mm -hmm. I'll let you read it. Let's see here. Where are we at? Okay, you want me to read it? Well, let's let's oh. just see how long it takes. What a mother wouldn't do. Oh, I have... I'm not sure if I want to watch this one quite yet, so maybe we'll wait a while. We've got other things like MASH on DVD to watch <laughs> or anything else so you get sounds like beth isn't in the mood for that one tonight sounds like a vengeful mother killing with some kind of cursed object i really couldn't say uh, what she I've, would cur what she would kill with i mean i have no prediction for what a what mother wouldn't do I have but no i would say it's definitely a vengeful mother trying to avenge something or or protect her children with something so but I don't know what the something is but I'm totally going with the vengeful angry mother vengeful mother getting you know protecting her family what a mother wouldn't do all right well if, <laughs> if you're done I'm done I think so thanks for listening thanks for listening catch you next time <laughs>